What is up YouTube, it's Kingfisher745, and welcome to Spec Op 32 Task List Part 3. This is basically the halfway point, at least as far as videos, it's usually 5 parts. And like most of the parts, it's going to begin with the research. Well begin and end with the research. So let's go ahead and pick up the little brother. This gadget isn't as great as the big brother, but it is a free version. And it doesn't look that bad. Though I'm not sure if I'm ever going to get it to go off, and we'll go over that in a moment. But we also got 1200 experience, and we can move on to task number 12. Seeing red 12 of 25. Use little brother in combat. Alright, so this is another task you can complete anywhere in spec up, or even outside of it. Just equip the little brother, and use it. And you do have to use it twice. Since we couldn't even get the nuclear launch to actually land, we're just going to show you the second use of it, and then we'll be done with this task. I just went ahead and equipped it in the spec op, because I'm trying to fight through the second mission at this time. So here I am with two characters that needed leveling, and we're just trying to make it to where we can actually use that little brother. See, it starts with a cooldown, and then on top of that, it doesn't actually do anything right away. So to me, that kind of lowers the value of it. It just takes way too long to do anything. And I know the big brother can have its cooldown lowered. At least I believe that's how it works with other set pieces. So it may actually get used. Unlike the little brother currently. But hey, they wanted us to use it and we got to use it twice. Though it will take you two battles. At this point you can pretty much finish the enemies. You don't have to wait for it to do any damage. And you will get credit for the task once it's complete. One more hit from Tigra ought to do it, so there's a Tiger's Fury, and that's the end of this task. We also are going to have Karnak really close to the next level, and Tiger is getting there also. But after completing task number 12, you'll get 1 CP, and you can of course move on. For 13 of 25, you have to defeat Skurn, Breaker of Men, and she's a mini boss in Mission 2. So luckily she's already up and ready to fight. The team up in this one will be with Red She-Hulk, and we're going to bring in Karnak because he's very close to level 15. Now I'm going to tell you I've had a few fights with Red She-Hulk, and she seems pretty awesome. The all melee attacks is pretty scary though. As far as Winter Soldier, I haven't got to use him yet. I've heard different things from various agents, but I do think he's going to really earn his worth once you can build around him. So don't necessarily see what the AI can do and then judge him too quickly. Or I should say the version that doesn't have any ISO. It definitely doesn't mean that he's not good. You'll just need to build him differently. I personally have a lot of confidence in him, especially once we can put whatever ISO we want on him. As for the mini boss Gurn, she's actually in a wave all by herself. So once this scientist is gone, we're only going to have that mini boss to contend with. To also be honest with you, we have the little brother still equipped, and I was hoping to get it to go off, but I don't think that's going to happen. Like I said, it just takes way too long. But as far as the enemy, we'll let him go down to dots. Now on the mini boss, the little brother is going to be off of cooldown, but we'd pretty much have to not attack her to let it go off. Even with us taking it easy, I still don't think it's going to happen. We'd probably have to be facing Colossus and maybe Kurth on the enemy side for us to see that attack. That can certainly be arranged in PvP though. Anyways, with my agent, we're going to use Inevitable Doom rather than doing damage. At least right now damage. Unfortunately, Karnak's going to go ahead and preemptively counter with Fracture Flaw. Since I've been leveling him, he's using that a lot. And it has me thinking of maybe using him in a team up with Rocket or Spidey Noir. And since he hits so often with it, he's going to probably take her out so we might as well just start attacking. After using his level 2, we're going to go ahead and use his level 9 Shatter Strike. And he'll follow it up with a Fracture Flaw. Then with Red She-Hulk, we'll use her level 9, and that's going to finish this fight. So here's a Savage Strike. Pretty nice non-crit damage. And with that, we've completed another task. 140 XP for Karnak, and 15,000 Silver Reward. So now on to task number 14. Now I'll tell you right now, this next one's going to be PvP. 
and you have to win two PvP battles. At first, I just thought you had to fight them. But no, you do actually have to win. So I'll show you one of those two matches, and it happens to be against Invisible Woman and Kurth. We're using Spider-Man Noir and Colleen. Since Colleen gets to begin, we'll use her level 6, and she follows it up with her level 1. Our agent also joins in, and we get a beat at proc. Then on Invisible Woman's turn, we're going to use Samurai Spirit, that will interrupt it, and we get a follow-up attack there as well. Spider-Man Noir of course joins in with a beat it, and he's going to preemptively counter, so that's the end of Invisible Woman. And yeah, this team is going about as good as it possibly can. We even get a follow-up from the Dark Energy Blade, which elicits another beat it. Mind Control procs from the Dark Energy Blade before the experiment, but it does go off. And then Colleen's going to preemptively stop another one of his attacks. Okay, so now on Noir's turn, we're going to use his level 1 Gum Up the Works. Our agent follows it up with a Relentless Rapier, and that's the end of the match already. So yeah, if you love Colleen Wing, there's going to be an All Hell the King episode on her tomorrow. So make sure you check it out. Meanwhile, task number 14 is complete, and we get another 1200 XP for our agent. Moving on to task 15, you have to defeat the leader, the end boss of Spec Up 32 Mission 2. The team up in this battle is going to be Red Hulk. And we're going to be facing one mini boss as well, Absorbing Man. Red Hulk's pretty tough so this shouldn't be a hard fight. He's going to absorb energy anytime they hit him, after we use Bulwark. After this task, we're going to reach our next research. And so that'll be the end of part 3. We are speeding this fight up of course because it's really long and not exactly epic. The leader's just going to avoid a lot of attacks. It gets quite annoying. So you may want to make sure you bring some dots. As for the group boss, I am debating making a video on him. But basically I've been using Fixer and Baron Mordo. I think my highest hit from Fixer was over 600,000 damage. So he rarely takes it to him. Until yesterday, I only saw three, but I got another eight, so I'm pretty pleased, and I want to thank everyone for sending me their group boss. We're still quite a ways from doing our first lockbox opening, but at least we're a lot closer today than we were the other day. So once again, thank you everyone who sends me their group boss. Now the weird thing about Leader I just want to mention is, the red version, I would say is much easier than this one, because you don't keep getting hit with predictable. I'll also be honest, we didn't even mouse over him to see what was going on, which was pretty lazy of us, but I figured we'll overpower him at some point. Part of that's going to come from Absorb Energy, and the other part, like I said, is going to come from Dots. So right now, my guys are just getting preemptively countered, and it's stopping their attacks entirely. Then on the leader's turn, he's going to use Must I Do Everything, but he does take some Absorb Energy damage right there. And again. So with my agent, we're going to use Atom Smasher, and that's actually the end of the fight. The leader apparently isn't knocked out though, he does escape. Alright, well that one looked like it was going to take a long time, but the Atom Smasher came through. And Karnak's ready to level. At the end of this task, we get the blueprint for the Premonition Stimulator. Another quick action gadget. You also unlock Mission 3. And this is going to take us to our next task. For task number 16, you have to recover one radiation pill and create the premonition stimulator in the lab. So let's go there and see the other costs. The time will take one day. It also costs 40 unstable ISO 8 and 5,000 silver. That's going to be it for part 3, so we'll be back with part 4 probably on Wednesday. And we'll have a Colleen Wing All Hail the King episode tomorrow. Thank you all for watching, please like, comment, and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck, and take care.